Hey guys, what is up? I'm Johnny Q and welcome back to the Johnny Q channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is all about the basics. Sometimes you gotta go back to square one. And you gotta ask yourself, why do I do this? Why do I keep doing this YouTube thing? Why do I wanna keep making YouTube content and create videos for my channel? Sometimes you just gotta go back to the basics as to how to do those things. After you watch this video, you'll be able to do two things and that's shoot better and have better content because both of those things hand in hand, mano y a mano, go well together. All this coming up after the intro video in three, two, one, psych! Come on, guys, you know me. You know that we have not made an intro video yet. You know that my YouTube channel needs an intro video. But for now, no intro video. Just a good looking guy in a black leather jacket speaking to a camera. That was so dumb. A camera, a tripod, a lens. Oh yeah, and then I also forgot you get a microphone because you need something to capture the audio. You can't just really use the microphone on the body because it won't sound good. As I've learned from experience, you live and you learn. That's why I'm making this video. For people who need to know what are the essentials, what are the vlogging essentials I need to be a better content creator, to be a better filmmaker, to be a better YouTuber, all of these tools, like these three things, lens, tripod, and body, are literally the essence of a vlog. Like you need these things to start making a vlog, right? And so let's say you went and you spent the money and you got what you wanted, and you're thinking, wow, I still, my videos aren't that good. They're not turning out like him. They're not turning out like her videos. What am I doing wrong? We have the same gear. We have the same setup. What am I doing wrong and what are they doing right? Side note, some just overall life advice. Do not play the comparison game and do not compare yourself to others. It is pure poison. It'll stop you from creating. It'll stop you from executing your ideas onto the platform and ranked. Yes, all of these things are great ingredients for a great vlog, a great video, a great film, but you gotta know some things before you start vlogging. You gotta have what I like to say, the five essential things to vlogging, okay? And vlogging essential numero uno. Number one for all those non-Spanish speaking people, numero uno is one. And that is simply shoot in 24 FPS. Now, when I first started vlogging, I bought a Sony camera and then I bought a Canon 80D. What I did with those cameras was, it did not do the camera justice at all. Do not, do not, do not, do not shoot your content in 60 frames per second, which is what I did. Why, Donnie? Why shouldn't I film in 60 frames a second? Well, I'm glad you asked. The only reason you would shoot 60 frames a second is because of slow-mo. But if you're vlogging and you're filmmaking, you wanna make it look as cinematic as possible. I mean, I get on YouTube and I watch other YouTubers and I get so inspired. I'm like, wow, their footage is just crazy good. It's gold. Shooting at 24 FPS. Blogging essential number two, numero dos, okay? Low ISOs, low ISOs always. This is quite simple, really, because ISO just essentially the camera gives you an artificial lighting if you need it. If you're in a dark room, you would need higher ISO, I get that. But if you're outside in the daylight and you're shooting photo or video, please go to 100 ISO because that's gonna be your base ISO. You don't need any more artificial lighting outside. You don't need any more help from the camera to give you more of exposure. You don't need more light. The lower the ISO, the better your image quality will be if you're outside. It won't be as grainy if you, as if you were inside. Like right now, I think I'm at, I'm at 160 ISO. And even then, that's pushing it just a little bit, but I wanted some room so that I can actually color grade the way I like to color grade. Okay, I have these lights, and they provide enough light for me to be at a base of 100 or so. And so that's why ISO is super important. Vlogging essential number three. Okay, numero tres. Three. I made this, I made this little saying for vlogging essential number three, and that's for lighting. You'll get it right when you have the right light. Rip, there goes my career. But it's so true, you gotta find the right light. But let me just show you. Pretty good lighting, huh? I mean, as you can tell, this is probably super, super bad. I mean, it's in, it's in manual mode. Look at that light. It's orange, it's like we're on Mars. It's got this super deep tungsten look. 
Now, if I compensated my camera settings for this lighting, it would still look super bad. Why? Because it's so dark in this room. And the only light source available is the ceiling fan. And that is just disgusting. That is a disgusting look. Super disgusting. Like I said, you'll get it right if you find the right light. Vlogging essential number four. Cuatro. Number four. That is, compose the shot. It's an odd thing to say and it's an odd thing to hear, but as a filmmaker, as a vlogger, as anyone who's gonna shoot a camera for photo and video, you need to compose the shot super well. And I did the vlog from over here. Hey guys, welcome back to the John and Q channel. Thank you so much for watching. Not so pleasant to the eye. What if I did this? Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Johnny Q. I'm just uh, working on some spreadsheets right now. No, I'm not. You get what I mean. Composition is everything photography and videography, especially when you're vlogging. Like if I'm holding this out, I better be in frame. Unless someone is in with me or if I'm pointing something out, then yeah, make room for them. Compose the shot so that you're also in it, but then there's your subject in the background also is. But if it's just you talking to the camera, your composition of your frame, of your shot needs to be right on. So if I frame myself kind of in the middle of my space from the wall, from this table, to the camera and the lens. This is a pretty well composed shot. Remember, you're vlogging, you're creating, you're trying to get your ideas out into the real world, you're trying to execute. So why not give the audience the best thing that you can by framing and composing your shots just for them? Lastly, number five, numero cinco. And yes, I'm fluent in Spanish if you haven't already. If you can't tell, I'm brown, I'm somewhat Mexican looking and I can speak Spanish, so. Whatever. This is something that I had to learn kind of just recently. I knew that I needed to do this just from the get-go when I got my cameras, but I was scared or I was just, I didn't really know if I was gonna be able to make changes on the fly, like I'd see other YouTubers do, but it's shoot in manual, okay? As tempting as it is to buy a really nice camera and let the camera do the work automatically when you shoot in auto, Yes, in some respects, it can look good, but the thing is you won't be able to control your setting. You won't be able to control the creative output from the camera body to the audience. You just won't be as in control as you could be if you shot in manual. Shooting in manual gives you the control. Shooting in manual lets you be creative, lets you bring out shadows, lets you create shadows, it lets you bring out subjects, and it lets you hide subjects. Shooting in manual kind of gives me this feel right now of of kind of this, you know, dark on this side. And yet, and yes, it's because of the lighting, but like, there's still light over here. Look at this, there's still light over on this side, you know, as well as in the back. But on because of my ISO and because of my aperture and shutter speed in manual, I'm able to actually create this, this cool feel and this really awesome vibe right now. And shooting in manual actually taught me more about my camera, taught me more how to use my camera as I use it out in the real world, as I'm vlogging, as I'm filming. It just takes a little bit getting used to with, you know, where your ISO is. If you're, like we said, you're outside, you're at 100 ISO, you go inside and it's dark and you gotta bump that ISO, but everything else is in place, like shutter speed and aperture. Yeah, you just gotta go boom, boop, 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 and then boom, your ISO is good to go. You just gotta know where the placements of those buttons are on your camera and be, you'll be able to master it. Vlogging essential number six. I was just gonna do five, but number six. Number six is an important piece of vlogging essentials to anyone, that's what it is. Creating content on the daily, that's start creating. The camera body, the lens, the microphone, the tripod, the lights, all of this stuff, it won't help me create the story, it'll help me create a better story, but I'm the one essentially creating this story, creating this video. Okay, these are just some of the things that I wish someone would have told me at the beginning of my you know, my YouTube creating journey. I had to learn these things on my own and I'm still learning every single day and I, I'm going to keep learning. I'm never gonna stop learning about video, and about creating all these different things. And so hopefully this has helped you. Hopefully, I mean, even if you already knew these things, like I said, you gotta go back to square one. You gotta go back to the roots on why you do this. You gotta find that passion or find that thing that makes you just go and work at it. So. Hope you guys liked the video. I'll catch you next time on the John and Q channel. Peace.